In this video, we're going to talk about creating your own interaction that can be used for a knowledge check or, um, you know, any type of um, activity that your learners can do to check their knowledge, to check to see that they've retained that knowledge from a previous lesson. And we're going to do a little twist here as well. We're going to add some responsive design to this particular project as well. So maybe you're creating a, a full-blown online course that is a an hour long that that uh, course that someone would do from their PC in the office. But this could just as easily be done on a tablet or a mobile phone as well. So I've created some some objects to start us off here. Um, there's basically two slides and uh, in the first slide we have uh, a simple knowledge check so presumably prior to this my my uh, learners have learned what the capital of Canada is and all they need to do to demonstrate this knowledge is click on the correct answer so I've given them uh, the correct answer plus three distractors as we call them uh, in other words, one right answer, which happens in this case to be Ottawa. Ottawa is the capital of Canada. But I've thrown up Vancouver, Toronto, and Montreal, which are wrong answers and are designed to distract our learner from the correct answer. Uh, so we find out truly if they know the answer or if they're just guessing. All these are, nothing special here, these are smart shapes which I'm using as buttons. Now you might be uh, thinking to yourself, well how is that possible? Buttons are buttons. Well actually if you click right here you can jump to a video where I teach you how to convert smart shapes into buttons and how you can create rollover effects like the ones I have right here. Uh, but in the meantime let's cover this off. You could use buttons as well, that's fine. I just like the flexibility of smart shapes. Um, so we have this slide. Now just to let you know as well, each of these buttons has a pause. I'm not doing narration on this particular course because again I'm designing this to be more of like um, an on-screen interactive element that someone might do while riding the train using their smartphone. Um, you can see the responsive design that's in place here, 1024 in the primary uh, window and then of course tablet version um, you can see I've obviously changed the arrangement of the buttons and for your smartphone I've changed the buttons again as well. So um, that's you know just a little bit of extra work to do responsive design. Uh, if there's an opportunity and a need for it I highly recommend that you do it. So let's take a look at slide 2. Now slide 2 I simply have some very simple objects on screen. These are the, this is the results window. There's two possible results. When you go back to this question and consider, there's Ottawa, which is the right answer, and the other possibility is the wrong answer, either Vancouver, Toronto, or Montreal. In all three cases, the result is still the same. Uh, you could take this a step further and actually have different responses depending on what they chose. You could say incorrect Toronto is not the cur the capital of, of Canada, Ottawa is, and so forth. But in this case, we're just going to make it really simple. And actually, I'm going to add something to this. I just had this thought that, you know, we want to give people a, maybe a second or third opportunity to, to answer this correctly. Maybe they just made a mistake. So I'm just going to add another button here that we're going to go to the previous slide so that they can try again and we'll that will instead of calling it back we'll call a call the button try again and incidentally this is also a smart shape as well this is not an actual button again I just like using them they're they're kind of neat for this stuff let's um, personally I don't like the click sound and it's nice to have a visual cue that there's so you get the, the hand cursor when you go over these ones. And let's just make sure that that looks good in all the different modes. Try again. Let's, uh, let's move these up. In fact, you know, um, because this will show up higher, 
on a smart screen and or sorry a smartphone uh, let's just have these appear higher on the page just so that users will see um, see things on their screen we don't want anything cut off so I'm just going to bring up the alignment toolbar which you saw there that's the window align because I want these smart shapes to be the same size or buttons the same size if you will and you know I could spend some time making sure they're perfectly aligned one thing I'd like to do is make sure that everything has a proper label to it because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using advanced actions to put a little programming behind these two little slides to make things happen so we want to make sure everything is labeled properly um, so here's my character that I'm using and she's going to represent success because she's got a smile on her face and she's pretty happy about how you answered that question but then there's also disappointed and uh, she doesn't look so happy as you can see here let's just uh, bring this up uh, a little bit here so you can see and we'll just go to clearly she's not happy so this is when you don't answer the question too well oh disappointment and then success so uh, I'm gonna rearrange these when we actually run them but I like them all to be visible uh, let's just make that best fit there and we have our two messages that will appear and again instead of using like you know the typical um, uh, when when they have a, a title for a, an object usually it's some kind of uh, funky title like subtitle underscore auto shape underscore three well I've renamed these two to incorrect underscore message and correct message so they're easy to find so again let's just double check our navigation here try again the action is go to the previous slide continue um, is go to next slide presumably we'll create something else after this but for right now we won't worry about that and let's just double check here so we have Ottawa Vancouver so what we want to do first of all is um, create a variable so we need a variable to store the answer in now you can't actually store the name Ottawa Vancouver Toronto Montreal but what you can store is the correct answer can be one and the wrong answers can be zero so let's create a variable that we can put into that and then what we'll do or put that result into and you can do this a couple of ways you can go to project variables is the way that I like to do it and we're just going to create the variable now I have one here already um, the initial value we're calling this knowledge one but let's add a new one just to to show you the process so knowledge two we'll call it. we'll pretend this is the second one the initial value is zero so we're assuming you don't have a correct answer yet and you can put a little description in here if you want so description nothing too fancy there hit save so now we have that variable knowledge too and you can have as many of these as you like as many knowledge checks as you have in your course you would have the variable for those so we'll just close that right up here and now we're going to do an advanced action and let's start off with Ottawa now we could uh, actually let's uh, first of all change this to execute advanced actions and we could choose an existing script but there isn't one yet so we can either click on this little folder icon next to the script drop down window or alternatively you can go into advanced actions through the project drop down menu or press shift F9 at any time uh, any one of those will bring up this window that you see here now there are essentially two types of advanced actions there are advanced actions that are standard actions and there are advanced actions 
where they are conditional actions. And we're going to use both of these in this project. But for right now, we just have a standard action. That's all we need. And the reason you want advanced actions, right? Because, of course, you could actually do a lot of stuff from the regular actions dropdown. You could, you know, assign something to that variable. But we're going to do two steps here. We're going to actually assign something to that variable we just created. And we're also going to turn these buttons into essentially submit buttons or next buttons, if you will. Um, rather than having the user click something twice, like click one one of their uh, knowledge check choices and then submit, we're going to build both interactions into one. So let's get back to advanced actions. So I'm just going to go in here and this is a standard action and this is going to be correct. We'll just call it whatever you want. And all we need to do is, sorry, assign our variable knowledge2 with a literal value of 1 or 0, correct or not correct. So we'll use 1 in this case, because this is the correct one. And then we want to go to next slide. It's not complicated. It's very straightforward here. We're saying you answered it correctly, and we're going to the next slide. So let's save this as an action. Again, that action is called correct. And now we're going to duplicate this action and change the name to incorrect. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change the value of knowledge 2 to be 0. We'll update this action. The script update is successful. So now we have two actions in our advanced actions. So let's highlight Ottawa. That's our correct answer. And we're going to execute advanced actions and we have correct. Now let's highlight all of our wrong answers because we can do this in one shot and execute advanced actions because it's the same for all of them they're all incorrect and that pretty much takes care of this slide so if I click on this one just to summarize what we've done so far I'm assigning the value of knowledge to to a value of one correct or if I click on any of the other three, I'm assigning the value of that knowledge to variable to be zero. So when you come off of here, you either have a value of zero or a value of one. And that's pretty straightforward. Let me just make sure that there's a pause on these guys. Yeah, pause after 1.5 seconds. That's great. So now let's go here. So in this case, we're also going to do um, an advanced action, but this time it's not going to be associated with a button click. It's going to be associated with um, when you enter this slide, it will run that advanced action. So we have, uh, we're, we're either going to show a character who's disappointed and show an incorrect message, depending on the variable value, uh, or we're going to show this character who's happy and show the correct message. And then the user can either try again or continue. Pretty straightforward. So let's create that advanced action. We'll go to Project, Advanced Actions. So now in this case, we're actually going to choose a conditional action. Because what we're saying is that if this variable equals something, then display something else. Right? So we'll start off with our if statement. So if our variable and its knowledge to that we're talking about is equal to the literal value of, and you can do either one here. You can do zero 
and then your your action would be appropriate for that response and then the else at the bottom of the page would be uh, the correct results uh, but in this case we'll do one we'll keep it simple so in other words if what this means is if the person answered correctly then do the following actions so what we'll do here is we will show the correct message and also show the success character. Now to make sure that we're not seeing the other characters we're going to hide those the other message and other character. So we're going to hide because again they successfully answered the question so we're going to hide the disappointed character and hide the incorrect message. Pretty straightforward but what happens if they get it wrong? Well the the knowledge 2 would be equal to 0 so in other words this doesn't apply so we're going to use the else section to hide the correct message hide the success, the success character and show the disappointed character and show the incorrect message so that's how that works so let's start off with the show show the disappointed character and we'll show the incorrect message so in other words sad face and got got the question wrong and then we will hide the correct message and hide the dis uh, sorry the the success character sorry I was getting those a little mixed to front here back to front here um, so let's just re uh, summarize this here so if knowledge check 2 is equal to 1 show the correct message show success hide disappointment hide the incorrect message alternatively show disappointed did I get this right yes yeah I just wanted to, sometimes I get confused so show disappointed show incorrect message hide the correct message hide the success message message and I just realized now we didn't give this a name so we'll just call this knowledge check two just so it's clear and lined up with our variable for knowledge two we'll save this as an action and we can close this window and then we can have that action run every time a user comes to this page so what we'll do is select execute advanced actions and you can see knowledge check 2 is there and that's all you need to do pretty much now you can of course um, do a, a little bit of work on making this look nice um, but I would recommend one thing as well because again you may flash for a second so you may want to um, hide these from view and the way to do that you got a little eyeball right next to the title of each object let's just put a slash through that slash through that slash through that so the initial state of all of these objects images and messages um, you know is uh, is the is hidden by default so we can now arrange these how we would let's actually line these two characters up so that they'll always appear in the same spot and we can do stuff with the messages I don't need them to be that tall and you know what actually I don't want to reveal the answer I have it here but let's just make it um, incorrect please try again or click 
continue to proceed with the course. We'll make this one the same size. And that looks pretty good. Let's just have these line up with one another so you can use the align and resize to the same size. And that way we can move our try again and continue buttons right up top here where they're easily accessed. Let's take a look at the other sizes here. That looks good to me. Um, well, we might have to fix this one a little bit because it doesn't line up. That's the thing about responsive design is that you very often have to check all of the different sizes and make sure that uh, that things are displaying properly. So we'll just resize that guy there and move this up a little bit. And we'll move our buttons here. Looks good. Looks good. Again, I would probably spend some more time making sure everything lines up properly. We'll just double check this one here looks very good. Okay, so um, well, let's preview this and see how it works. So let's just play the project. We'll give this a moment to render itself and now we can see a, a demo of what this looks like and of course because it's a responsive design we get to see of course the different views. So here's my knowledge check. So I've obviously learned a little bit about the uh, province uh, or sorry the capital of Canada and I should remember that it's Ottawa but let's say I forget for a moment and I hit Vancouver instead it'll bring me to this page where I see knowledge check results oh it's incorrect too bad let me try again so it'll bring me back to this page and if I click on Ottawa correct the capital of Canada is Ottawa and I can now hit continue and proceed with the course so pretty straightforward, a great way to do um, advanced, use advanced actions to create your own interaction. The advantage of this, of course, is that it allows you to really control the interaction. I know that much of this could be achieved by simply using a multiple choice question, but then you have to play with your quiz results and and uh, you know modify things like your quiz totals and whether an item contributes to a quiz. This way you have full control, you can have as many interactions and have the, own, the feedback be however you want it to be formed. Uh, I think this works really well and especially with, with using a responsive project you can, you can do a lot of neat stuff with that. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing like this one here, don't hesitate to give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, which I'll put on your page right here. It's right there. So hit subscribe if you'd like to see the rest of my videos and, and uh, get updates when I come out with new videos. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again real soon.